first of all, uh, thank you, Diku, for the beautiful city. Um, and uh, well, uh, I'm Angie, I'm the curator of education and family programs at Parasite. And tonight, uh, we're so grateful and uh, um, happy to see everyone here joining us. And also, um, uh, the curator of our current exhibition called uh, Women, Art, and Technology. Um, the curators um, and also the art historians uh, from all over the world. So um, today to start um, the opening reception, we're going to have this um, talk by the curators group and also our dear artists. Uh, so we have um, our dear Heidi Tuna traveling all the way from Tonga and we also um, have Hikau Hinzi, and also um, we have Bamaila Rally, and also our curator um, uh, Vivian Zirihor, and also uh, as our director and curator of Parasite. Um, the <coughs> exhibition uh, will open today and run through February 22nd, 2020. And throughout the time, we're going to have uh, very exciting public programming, including our guided tours in English, Mandarin, um, Cantonese. Uh, we're also going to have a very interesting program led by our curator, Cosmin Castellanos, um, introducing his own personal um, textile collections. Um, we will definitely uh, post more information on our website, and uh, everybody, please stay tuned. Um, this Sunday, we're going to start uh, with a very exciting um, artist talk by Benjamin. Where's Benjamin? Um, he's our current artist in residency here uh, in Hong Kong. And we're going to um, have this uh, sharing session. Benjamin will talk about his own practice, and we're also going to serve a Tongan uh, traditional drink, old Thai, made of watermelon, pineapple, and also coconut. So it will be really delicious. Uh, we would love to have everybody here on Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, well, without further ado, let's start the talk. Welcome, everybody. <coughs> Thank you, Anji, and, and thank you for this uh, really special uh, uh, welcome and, and, and inauguration uh, uh, that, that is Maori traditional. Uh, thank you very much. And I would like to uh, give another like big thank you uh, to Lady Tuna, and can we please have a big round of applause? It's really a great honor to have you here in Hong Kong. Thank you for uh, coming all the way uh, from Tonga. Thank you for your knowledge and your generosity and for uh, uh, um, giving this unique uh, opportunity to us and to our audiences to see these uh, real treasures. And um, treasures are, of course, uh, treasure is, of course, a metaphorical word here, but it's also uh, a, a, trans a, tra a translation of koloa, uh, which, which means value in, in, in Tongan language. So um, it is an, a, a particular opportunity to see uh, these creations. Um, these uh, practices, uh, these uh, incredibly prized objects uh, uh, from Tonga. Um, from our perspective as an institution of contemporary art, it's also part of uh, an ongoing uh, discussion and debate of understanding uh, what would be the uh, right circumstances of creating a platform to understand all the contemporary practices in the world in, in analogous terms, how to contribute to this global process of decolonizing uh, our references, our canons, uh, our uh, way of positioning ourselves and, and, and understanding the world. Um, and this, of course, has a lot of resonance in, here in Hong Kong. And um, it, there are also like debates that happen around artistic practices in um, a Chinese tradition, uh, looking from for, for, from uh, ink tradition and, and, and performative traditions among others, so it's it's, it's particularly uh, relevant to have this debate here uh, uh, and, 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 and and to uh, look at another uh, particular vibrant and vital uh, uh, tradition that is flourishing uh, in, 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 in in the Pacific and particularly in the Tongan context. And it's a great honor for us to have uh, Lady Tuna, who uh, is the foremost holder of this knowledge uh, and also uh, an, an active um, 
intellectual and fighter to keeping this tradition alive, to passing it to generations and to uh, maintain its vitality. Um, so this makes this uh, a unique uh, um, opportunity to, to carry this discussion. Um, we had the uh, exhibition first in Langofenua, in the uh, center uh, created by um, uh, Queen Salote III of, of Tonga in, in 1953 to, to, to cherish and to, to, to protect this art form. So the exhibition started in uh, August this year there. So um, we are, um, um, it was also like important for us to, uh, to, to, to first introduce it to the audiences and to the community that, that, that created these objects. So this is the second sort of the exhibition. It's in an expanded form uh, where we invited three uh, women artists from the Pacific as well. So Mikau uh, Vaimala who are here with us and we'll hear more from, from them and also like Tanya Edwards. Uh, so I'll pass now to uh, Vivian to uh, talk more about the sort of like thinking behind the exhibition and also like the way in which um, technology is a sort of like leading um, point of entrance in, 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 in relating to these practices. Thank you, um, and uh, thank you for inviting me to Parasite, which is an organization that uh, really casts an incredible uh, shadow, I think, or uh, you know, leads a light uh, in Hong Kong and, and to international conversations, which is what's really being staged here tonight. So I'm a curator from Australia, uh, and for a long time I've run an initiative called Frontier Imaginaries that uh, in dialogue between Australia and contexts including uh, Palestine, uh, the Netherlands, New York, was indeed, as Cosman is saying, uh, seeking the edges by which work uh, that's called decolonizing work might be possible to be done. And so that involves uh, an opportunity to learn histories that uh, might not have been the canonized histories, but also the opportunity to unlearn ways of doing things and that's very much what this exhibition has offered us in inviting, in fact, the Lady Dowager Fiela Kepa to herself curate the exhibition. Um, so Lady Dowager Fiela Kepa is widely, although she always sort of <laughs> is very upset at me whenever I sing the, the praises of her research knowledge, uh, but nonetheless I will say that she's being consulted by many uh, institutes, including the Smithsonian Institute, including national galleries in uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand, as well as UNESCO itself, uh, but is uh, often in those contexts referred to as someone who is an informer from the context. Uh, and for this exhibition, it was very important to both of us to invite uh, the Lady Dowager Fiela Caper as the curator, as the holder and the expert of uh, knowledge, which is, has been an incredible opportunity to learn and also to consider how uh, Koloa, the women's wealth of Tonga, uh, could most appropriately be presented as a vital and present practice. And for that reason, the exhibition has been called Women, Art, and technology in acknowledging the very sophisticated and multi-layered ways in which the textile arts, both the flat art of the bark cloth, which is a, uh, a beaten a mulberry tree bark that creates the very large pieces that you see outside, as well as the very finely woven pieces which produce the ta'ubala, the worn uh, rat garment, as well as the uh, fine mats that you see on the floor, exist as highly sophisticated networks of social exchange that produce a very complex political and social structure that has the capacity to bind <coughs> together a maritime geography of some 170 islands, as well as producing very finely um, calibrated relations among neighboring kingdoms, such as Fiji, Samoa, uh, and others further afield. So there's the uh, complexity of a sort of a social technology, uh, as well as the, um, uh, the ways in which the Kaloa, the uh, textiles themselves, evidence a, re a receptivity and an innovation in relation to modern technology as well, and modernization itself. So the capsule uh, presentation <coughs> in Parasite's new space downstairs was really dedicated to open this up, 
uh, and it features a beautiful example of a nyaktu, so a bark cloth from 1942, that bears the presence of a Spitfire World War II aircraft in it. Uh, so this marks the occasion in which uh, Queen Salote Topo III purchased three aircraft in 1942 as part of the World War II effort, and alongside the traditional motifs of uh, three <coughs> swords, which indicate the three royal lines coming together and uniting, uh, as well as other, the tokalau, the um, flayed uh, tuna fish uh, motif, you have also this Spitfire plane. Um, another example downstairs is the, there's the plane, uh, <laughs> conveniently. Another example that's referred to downstairs was in uh, 1909, uh, the first water tanks uh, were established in Tonga, uh, which was important in um, addressing uh, waterborne disease, tuberculosis, in preventing this, so the implementation of modern plumbing infrastructures also become motifs that appear on the Nyatu as well. Um, and so in opening out um, this conversation of, of the Koloa, the women's textile arts, as a vivid uh, and complex art and technology, um, we uh, realized that there was a number of women artists who also are very active within their uh, contemporary art practice, sort of moving uh, in, in the same direction backwards in some ways, in, in creating work such as Vaimila's uh, Aniva here, uh, which stands very strongly as contemporary art, uh, but that also pulls towards it um, uh, traditional indigenous aesthetics as well, uh, and as an effort of the revitalization of inhabiting uh, those sovereign worlds uh, that combine a relation of uh, body, uh, environmental knowledge, and social, uh, social uh, uh, practices. Um, so, uh, indeed, uh, at that note, perhaps uh, it might be a moment to invite uh, Nikau and uh, Baimaila um, to speak to the works within the exhibition and indeed to this thematic of uh, uh, women's art and technology. Kia ora, tano parava, manu lulei, we said about technology, the lady, Dawacha, Tuna Kelepa. And uh, also, um, I'm here to, uh, to my sister here, uh, Nicole Hendon, um, all the way from Aotearoa. And I just want also want to mention that Nico and her uh, partner Tikuru uh, from the um, indigenous people of Aotearoa. Uh, thank you also to Cosman and Vivian for inviting us here. Uh, so I think I'll just um, like to chat a little bit about uh, my work at Neva. Um, it is, uh, I've got two works here, uh, Neva, which is a wall installation, uh, sand on black card. I also have a second work, Mea Ila Ila, which is on this level. Uh, now that's a floor installation. And um, yeah, I suppose that the essence of my work is uh, what I think about uh, when I make work. Um, if you think about, um, if you stop speaking a language, if you stop hearing a language, uh, you know, it will die. Um, so, for example, uh, my Samoan visual language or Samoan symbology, uh, which I focus on, uh, it's very important to me that I keep that alive. And uh, so, uh, in my work, I reference uh, two Samoan symbols, which is Fa'abai uh, Tuli, which is uh, the E symbol, and that is Fa'abai uh, Tuli is basically uh, like uh, the footprint of a native shorebird, which is the Tuli bird. It also references uh, the Ali, uh, which is the tr traditional headrest, and um, the Ali. Uh, has two feet, which are shaped like a V. So you'll see a lot of this kind of V shapes in my work. Um, you'll also see uh, patterns which comprise of small lines, uh, the kind of slanted lines. Um, they reference what you call a tusi lili, or small lines, uh, which uh, come from the lines on a banana leaf. I'm not sure if you know a banana leaf, they have these beautiful fine lines. Uh, so basically, um, 
I do work across um, a very diverse range of media. I also do um, digital prints, uh, video, I also design tattoos, public murals, paintings, ceramics. Uh, but um, regardless of what uh, medium I'm, I'm, I work with, uh, the symbols are at the centre, essential to my work. And it basically is keeping that uh, visual language alive. Um, I also kind of build into it my, my own history. I will build in uh, motifs and to reference my daughters. I have a five and two, two daughters, five and six, and even one more mana man. Uh, I also reference, yeah, my, my, my heritage, uh, my parents. Um, it's a very kind of a, a very literal language. If you kind of look at it and you can see birds, for example, the frigate bird, um, footprints, maybe even figures, um, uh, flora and, and, and fauna. Um, it's very recognisable. Um, you can directly reference to the origin, I suppose, the source material, which is tapa, um, or ngatu in, in, in Tonga. Um, I also um, reference tatau, which is traditional Samoan tattooing. Um, I have a tattoo here which I designed myself. Um, it's tattooed by a friend of mine that I collaborated with. Uh, but um, yeah, this is a very didactic, uh, very repetitive, it's almost like OCD, um, this whole inc incorporating these um, Samoan symbols into my work. So it doesn't matter um, what material I'm working with, um, that is my visual language and it is part of uh, my legacy, my, my past, my present and my future. Um, yeah, good luck. Hello everybody, um, my name is Nico and I hail from the Hokianga um, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, which is in the far north on the, in the North Island. Um, uh, thank you for having me, Cosmo, Vivian, and um, Lady Tuna. Um, it's an honour to be um, in the show um, with my Maile and um, your collection and amongst all of this uh, knowledge from the past, um, the present, and the future. Um, firstly, how many people are from Aotearoa that are in this space right now? Can I see a show of hands? All the people from Aotearoa? <laughs> how, many, how many people have been to Aotearoa, New Zealand? Cool, okay. Thank you, oh, cool. So, um, it's so wonderful to see uh, familiar faces. Um, I just, uh, my mahi um, is downstairs, my work is downstairs, and uh, I, I focus on um, um, beating the bark cloth, um, which is from Ope. Um, paper mulberry plant, so I harvest the plant, I cut it, um, and I peel off the outer bark, and then scrape off the, um, the outer bark, and then um, scrape it for many hours with uh, scallop, sh scallop shells, and then beat it um, with a beater and a wooden anvil, and then make this cloth. Um, on this cloth, I make star maps, um, and we've been speaking about language. Um, I have created my own kind of star map that um, helps me to learn about celestial navigation. So uh, about six years ago, I was inspired by the double hold voyaging canoe called Hokulea um, because 43 years ago, this canoe was built to revitalize celestial navigation. So our ancestors probably came from somewhere around, uh, close to here, um, Southeast Asia, and sailed um, 
across to Central Pacific and then went up to Hawaii and down to Aotearoa. So how did our ancestors manage to traverse um, the Pacific Ocean, which is one third of the Earth's entire um, surface area? Um, well, we, we sailed on waka and we used the night sky to help us find direction. And um, 43 years ago, a canoe was built to replicate and um, revitalize this tradition. Um, so um, that waka is called Hokule and that um, was built in Hawaii. So this waka inspired me to revitalize Ote or paper Maori or Papa um, in Aotearoa because it was a practice that was no longer practiced um, in New Zealand. Uh, so, um, so that's why on my on my oath there I paint these star maps and um, downstairs there's a kind of key that uh, indicates or explains how to read these star maps and basically the the horizon is um, the edge of your star compass and your waka is in the center and you divide the horizon into 32 houses and included in those 32 houses is north, south, east and west um, and in between those houses are seven houses called Ra, Kaina, Noyo, Manu, Ngārani, Ngāreo and Haka and then um, stars live in these houses, conceptually live in these houses and so um, if you memorize uh, a star and the house that it lives in, then that is, becomes a marker for direction. So we know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, while stars also rise in the east and sets in the west. Um, an example is Matariki, which is Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters, or Subaru. Um, it rises two houses north of east, um, 24 degrees. So it lives in the house Kaina. And um, when you see that star on the horizon, that star becomes um, a marker for direction. So you know, okay, two houses that way is east, that must be west, that must be north, that must be south. So when you're on your waka, then you can orientate yourself um, in accordance with that direction. So that's what my star maps are about. And they actually are time specific, so they track the night sky on this um, summer solstice, the winter solstice, the autumn equinox, and the spring equinox. So those are the works downstairs. Um, yes. <laughs> that was a lot to say. It would be great uh, uh, if, if Lady Tuna would like to say a few words. Uh, it would be really uh, honored. In, in particular, perhaps, um, uh, Lady Tuna, you could respond to uh, your impressions of seeing this rich color, your uh, collection and works that you've commissioned within the contemporary art uh, context of Parasite. Should I say it again? <laughs> uh, first of all, as I told you before, I'm slowly losing my memory. And I think I'm slowly losing my English. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't understand me, bear with me at an age where you start losing your memory. In Tonga, we usually have what we call a talkative chief. And a talking chief speaks in this um, field. I have a talking chief with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like him first to speak, and then after that, then I will go along with you. Uh, this is one of my grandchildren, and uh, he wasn't invited to come. <laughs> <laughs> it was only me and my 
doctor. <laughs> and, uh, but luckily enough, uh, his name is Alex, uh, came because he knows more about uh, what we are here for than my doctor. <laughs> my doctor knows how to drive a wheelchair into every pothole <laughs> in the street that he wanted to take me to sightseeing during the rain yesterday. <laughs> but I'd like to introduce my talking chief and also to Examine if he passes to be a talking chief <laughs> to say a few words. Um, <laughs> hello everyone, my name is Alex. Uh, Tongans are quite known for their impromptu speeches <laughs> and impromptu demands. <laughs> um, but this stage I've, I've been instructed uh, to just deliver sort of a, uh, a lot of things to those who started this project, to those who worked through this project. And uh, I think we could all agree that it's just a magnificent um, outcome and such a wonderful turnout and it's it's a learning opportunity for everyone not only all of you but all of us this interchanging of knowledge uh, it enriches our culture and history and uh, the international relations between each country and i think as you all know this the first ever international exhibition of of uh, the personal collection of the Dowager Lady Silakeba and it's quite uh, a personal and emotional feeling to have your family belongings and your heirlooms and what you think is not interesting and valuable being displayed and having so much people display interest and value in them so uh, thank you Cosmin, uh, Vivian, uh, Fanny and all the team in Parasite for making this extraordinary event um, happen and we do well I hope it's approved that the exhibition does continue to other countries and I would be privileged and honored to just go <laughs> so maybe I'm guessing Europe uh, you know a world global trip <laughs> but overall I do like to extend and convey our sincere gratitude to Cosmin, Vivian, Fanny and everyone in Parasite for the outstanding work and thank you by Maria, Nikau, Benjamin and Ileli for joining us in this extraordinary journey. Um, so that's a bit from me. Uh, I'll just give it back to her because she did tell me to deliver a speech and I told her the whole purpose, you're here sitting on this chair is they expect you to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> they, they expect you to express your knowledge. I hope Lady Tuna will agree that you passed the exam as a talking Of course, of course. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry that um, I had to make a younger person uh, say it, but you know, that's the future. They should be able to stand on their own and say the appreciation of uh, what we uh, experienced since our coming. I'm too old to say thank you, <laughs> but with a young person, it is education for the future that he will go on. And on the second part, he just received a scholarship. He can be a uh, Draw drafter or something. <laughs> and to say that I think on the day that we, we were putting on the exhibition, he had his interview. 
And one of the interviewers for an Australian uh, culture was uh, well aware of what uh, Alex had been doing. And she uh, put out the question to say, I know that you've been helping your grandmother a lot about this exhibition of uh, Tom and Koloa and the girl who uh, made the question told me it just set Alex on and went on and on to talk about the exhibition. But he got his scholarship. <laughs> and therefore I keep reminding him, you got your scholarship from the exhibition <laughs> on the floor. And then again, I brought two boys. It's usually girls who work on the floor, right? But this time I brought the two boys so as to teach their future wives about floor. My granddaughters know about it, but I want them to teach their future wives about floor. Thank you. Um, Hosman and Vivian. I never knew that I'd be in this part of the world, and I know you've had enough of me, and especially the people working in the office. Uh, ask Alex, ask them if it's safe to come to Hong Kong <laughs> all the time. Ask them if it's safe, and uh, but that's for age. Uh, I thought to myself, use your brain, Puna. If there's trouble there, is it wise to go or not? But then I trusted Cosman and um, Vivian that they would give me the truth. And sure enough, we've been here. We've enjoyed ourselves. And we are fortunate to take this opportunity to see this place. We know about it. We've learned about it. But this is the first time to come. And one of the things that I mentioned, I think, to the two young girls who came and uh, met us. I thought uh, something was different with the uh, Chinese. And I said to them, uh, you are different from the Chinese that come to Tonga. And they said, how? I said, because you smile, you laugh freely, <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, it's, it's something that I did notice. Maybe the Chinese were afraid of Tongans. And sure enough, uh, to smile, to be free with them. But these young ladies, they were just like a friend that we had had for a long time. And that made us at home. So you want me to talk about Koloa? <laughs> uh, in my whole life, I had no imagination that Koloa uh, people would be interested in it. I thought it was just personal things for families that we uh, make it ours to use because of our tradition and our uh, upbringing. But um, I hope that uh, you would take this from me. Koloa to us means our life. As I said before to the other people that were here before, um, a woman's uh, duty in a family is to bring up the children. 
And when a child turns out well, they say it was a wise mother that child came from that family. And if it doesn't, then the poor mom gets all the blame for what the children turn out to be. The second thing, if, if the obligation of the mother to prepare uh, such materials as I have uh, brought with us, uh, this is a sign of respect to wear the dava. There are occasions where we wear a dava, for example, to church, uh, to gatherings where there is uh, royalties or chiefs, or even priests, or it's a family gathering, formal, we wear a tawala, and a tawala fit. Each tawala has a reason or when to wear it. We are wearing this tawala because there was a funeral in the family, and of course when we came we wore black, and then we changed and wore other clothes that uh, were lighter. And then I thought to myself, uh, someone might send a photograph back home. And they'll look at it. We've already taken off our black uh, clothing and also no tawala. That means uh, their grandfather has not been 10 days. Uh, we're still mourning for it. We better wear black again just in case Cosman uh, or uh, one of the others would send a photo home <laughs> and they'll say, how on earth could they don their uh, clothing that they should still be wearing black? So we wore it tonight and tomorrow we sure not to have it. We'll enjoy ourselves like, like we go to a picnic, we don't wear a tawala because you're going to go swimming and you won't wear a tawala because you drown. When it's wet, it's heavy. So, those are the tawala. The mats and the tapa also go with obligations between families. Funerals, weddings, birthdays, birth, um, many obligations between the two families of a man and a wife uh, is held right through our life. And all the koroa that we have here has been used uh, for my family and slowly uh, the grandchildren would take over it. Um, I hope that I would be able to divide it fairly, uh, but these two here, I think, know more of the worth of it than the rest of the grandchildren, so they'll pick and choose the best. <laughs> but that is Koroa for a woman. It's a valuable that we have. We are born, they have a piece of tapa there. When we pass away from this life, our last uh, covering before they put on, uh, I won't say barn, but before they put on a nice, beautiful uh, white dress to bury you with. But we wear a piece of tapa because we are still common. And when you are born, you're born with a piece of tapa uh, to receive you. When you leave, you have a piece of tapa, they believe, to keep you warm mm -hmm. in your grave. So it's very important to us. And not only you Tongan, I believe 
to most of the um, islanders. They had their own uh, way that uh, they used these. Uh, some people might call it rubbish. Uh, these as traditions that we believe that we should hold on to. And the last thing I'll say, Tampa records history. As they were talking about the, um, the water tank, there was a time in 1909 that problems of health because of the um, drinking water not suitable. Therefore, a water tank was put up by government at each small village, two or three in bigger villages. 1909, they found out many of the Tongans don't remember it. But sure enough, there was a tapa, there was a stencil of a water tank. And Tongans have been asking, why on earth is a water tank on a tapa? Asked Ben Tim, uh, Cosman, and I don't know where they got it from, but there was, it was history. On tapa, they recorded the history of the arrival of Christianity. They got um, Tapa Cloth uh, commemorating the 150th uh, years of uh, Methodist Secondary School. It's history put on that. Even with the aeroplanes, that many are not aware of it. <coughs> Queen Sarote and the world People of Tonga donated two airplanes to World War II. And those two airplanes were put on Atapa. Many people don't remember it. But because of this, we dug up all the different um, stencils of the Pesci. Sure enough, there was two airplanes um, donated by Queen Salote and the people for World War II. And to me, uh, I think a question that they asked, what do you expect from this? Or what would you like this exhibition to share with others. To me, um, what I'd like to see is that uh, other people will know that these uh, natural materials are very much of our lives and our traditions and what we are. Not only in Tonga, but I'm sure it's the same in the Pacific Island as people. It's our relationship that shows us with these uh, material things that we've kept through. So I hope that somehow you would uh, refer to these as islanders or islands of the Pacific. That is us and what our traditions and our respect uh, every day we're still using it to keep it alive. Uh, again, I would like to say thank you for all those that have worked very hard to make this um, we were surprised to look at that building when we first came. It was so plain, 
When we came today, it was beautiful. <laughs> and people were still working. We thank you very, very much. God bless you. Thank you so, so much uh, to all of you. And now, if there are uh, questions uh, that uh, you would like to ask in this uh, um, setting, um, if not, uh, we will continue with the opening for another hour, so please feel free to approach uh, uh, any of our guests and, and, and have informal conversations. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, again, and, and uh, please enjoy the opening.